Our final step that we have in our hypothesis testing is to actually make a conclusion. Um, no matter how good you are at any of these other steps, if you can't well communicate your results, uh, you basically just kind of wasted your, your time. So we need to be able to make a good conclusion. So back to step nine, we either are rejecting or we are failing to reject the null hypothesis. If we have failed to reject the null hypothesis, let's start off with that one. So we'll say that p-value was greater than alpha. So if that happens, here is what we could then write. We could then say that we collected insufficient sufficient data at the alpha level whatever our alpha was. We collected insufficient data at the alpha level alpha to reject the claim. Reject the claim of whatever our null hypothesis was. So we just, we collected insufficient evidence to reject the claim. And this is the same thing as saying that we basically, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. There are some other ways that we can rewrite this, and we also need to like include our test statistic and uh, in our p-value, basically at the APA format, uh, so that we have it in our conclusion. But if essentially this is where we're at, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then that's all that we have to do. But if we do reject the null hypothesis, uh, we have to take it a step further. All right. So here we go. We'll say that down here that our p-value was less than alpha. If that happens, we can almost write this exact same thing, but add some more stuff on. We can say that we collected sufficient evidence sufficient evidence or data, you can use either one, at the alpha level, we'll say of alpha, to reject the claim, whoops, too many does. that the, I'll put a whatever a null hypothesis, and instead conclude, well, whatever the alternative hypothesis was. Uh, so this is kind of written in generalities. Uh, when we get into some examples, this will make a lot more sense. Now, once we have done this, we basically said that we have rejected the null hypothesis and concluded the alternative. Then what we need to say, because at this point we can only say that, remember, the alternative only says that the true mean is either greater than, less than, or not equal to the hypothesized mean. And the next question is always is then, well, where do you think it is? And when that happens, then we also need to include a confidence interval statement. 
And so we've done this already. So basically we just need to, uh, need to calculate out the confidence interval for the scenario and then use that same methodology that we use for confidence intervals, like saying we're 95% confident that the true mean is located somewhere between uh, you know, a couple values and that's this is how we make our conclusion where we're saying that did we if we fail to reject we just have to say that but if we rejected we also need to include our confidence interval and with that we have gone through all of our steps of our hypothesis testing now we have to do a few modifications as our conf as our hypothesis testing becomes a little bit more complicated that we have to like um, how we calculate out our test statistics you know is different for different scenarios uh, but this is really the basic steps that we do. And if we follow these steps, we are able to basically um, do like how, what real science is done. Like this is the methodology um, where we are able to like design these experiments, make some conclusions, and hopefully learn something new about the world around us.